Number seven, if the commission has to have a meeting because you did something stupid and they're going to bring you in front of the commission, guess what? You pay for all of that. <coughs> so not only are they going to hang you, you're going to get paid. You're going to pay for them to hang you. All that per diem and travel and all that stuff that they get, that's not coming out of the state anymore. That's coming out of your pocket. And they have to have copies, and they had to have a uh, stenographer there, and they had to have professional opinions. You're paying for all of that if that's your court case. Number eight's the one I laugh at. Why is there a, a law? Why is there any law ever? Because someone broke it, right? So there's a law that says sanctions must be applied evenly. So what's that tell you? They must not have been applying their sanctions evenly to have to create their law for that. At least that's what I get out of that. <clears throat> they can also bring court action through any other court. Remember I told you, this is civil court. If there's criminal activities involved, they can bring in the attorney general to get the criminal portion. There was a guy that was an agent that was stealing prescription drugs out of homes when he would show houses. And they caught him. And of course, the commission did their thing, but they also brought in the attorney general and filed criminal charges against him as well. So they can do that. They also can hire anybody they need. If they need a private investigator, they'll hire that person. So they, they have the right to do all of that to investigate whatever you're doing. The next one is one that we touched on way earlier. There has to be no harm done for there to be a violation. All right? Has to be no harm to the client. You are a professional. You work under a different set of laws. So if you've done something and really didn't affect the outcome, let's say, let's go back to the earnest money thing. No harm really was done. Hey, just pay the stop fee on that check and write a new check. That's still a violation. All right? No harm has to be done. <clears throat> and number 11 says, if you're found guilty, obviously you get to appeal. And you can take anybody with you. I mean, there have been plenty of them there where they've had attorneys. It is a civil court action. The chairman presides. They have legal counsel that sits with them, and then they make a decision based, and they literally will make the decision right there. That's what I said. They don't pull punches. The, you'll hear them go, okay, somebody will make a motion. I motion that we find Raymond $1,000 for doing that. And the chairman will go, all in favor? Aye. And they'll record who said yes. Anybody opposed? Okay. You're fined $1,000. So they do it as a commission. All right, this next section is the recovery fund. The recovery fund. It's section five, and it goes all the way over to number six, I would assume. <laughs> but let me, I'm going to do it in a free form. I'm going to break it down rap style, free form. <laughs> No. All this information is in this section five, but let's go over this a little easier for me to explain it to you so it makes sense. So there is a second bank account that I told you we have. It's called the Real Estate Recovery Fund. In this recovery fund, we have $650,000. Maybe I should read the outline because I just lost my mind. We have $600,000. So I take that back. <laughs> Trust me, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> That's how they say screw you in New York. Trust me. <laughs> so we have $600,000 in this recovery fund. This is earmarked to make clients whole. Now, 
there are two things that have to happen out of the gate for the recovery fund to even be in play. Most importantly, whoever did the grievous action has to be a licensed real estate agent. All right? If they are a con man and telling you they have a license but they don't, then it's not our worry. That's the fraud division or t somebody else. So they actually have to have a license. Now, this is a case where there actually has to be harm for the real estate recovery to kick in. All right? This is not a punitive damages award. You guys know what punitive means? It's not a punishment, exactly. So you can't say, oh, Lydia did something wrong. I didn't get the house I wanted. Now my feelings are hurt. I want her punished. No, that's not what this recovery fund's for. This is for actual damages. Raymond stole my earnest money. I didn't get it back. I have actual harm. Okay, now you are a candidate. So the person that did the action has to be licensed, and you do have to have harm in this particular case. So those are the first two things out of the gate. We have 600 grand. It's held by the treasurer of the state for us. Once again, we control the, the strings, but it's held by someone else. And here's how it works. <clears throat> if this fund pays out and goes below $450,000 and they need to replenish it, guess where the money comes from? You are your brother's keeper, all right? So they paid money out because when somebody stole somebody's earnest money, they're going to call every one of us and go, hey, you guys owe me $1.27 or whatever the number breaks down to. And literally what they would do is say, oh, we're 150000 short. There's 150000 of you. Everybody bring a dollar, all right? So you are your brother's keeper. You will replenish that back. This happened about, I can't remember, about four years ago, five years ago. When we bought our license, we paid our $60 for the license, and then we paid another $4.50 that went into the recovery fund, all right? So one thing you need to understand, none of the licensing fee goes to the recovery. It's added on top of it. So it's not like you pay 60 and they take four out and state gets 56. No, you owe 60 for your license and then another four to the recovery fund. Yeah, it's like an escrow account. That's exactly what it is. It's held in there in case somebody does something stupid. Right. All right? And they collect that from everybody that's currently licensed that renews that year or, or I should say and, any new people coming in. So uh, if it happened this year, you guys would pay your 60 plus whatever. So it comes from all the new people coming in and all the currently licensed people. That's how it happens. Now, if it earns interest and it goes above 750,000, and the easy way to remember those numbers is it's the same amount either way. 600 down to 450 or 600 up to 750. If it earns interest, collects interest of above 750,000, guess what happens to the overage? I will always wait for that one optimistic, optimistic person to say we get a refund. <laughs> no, you don't. Have you ever known the government to go, yeah, we'll take that back off? It's like we're still paying, aren't we still paying the 1% tax for the Hoosier Dome? That's now been gone for five years? Yeah. Now it's on the oil can? Yeah. I would like for the city to buy me a place to work. Build me a building. I want to work. So it gets swept into the state general fund, and that's where they pay the per diems and all that stuff out of. 
is the state general fund. So if it earns a bunch of interest, so they try and keep that balance around 600 grand, okay? That's what allows that to do it. Now, here's the other thing. To be able to make this claim has to be a licensed agent, you have to be harmed. But it's not, and I repeat not, it is not the first step for that person to go to. They actually have to go to court first and sue the agent. Think about this. If someone says, hey, Raymond stole my money, I'm innocent until someone proves me guilty. So the commission can't really pay out until they know Raymond's really guilty. And the only way they know Raymond's really guilty is they got to go to have a judge say that. So that's how to remember this. So if something happens and they come into the commission and they go, hey, I want to make a claim, they're going to go, do you have a court? No. You got to go to court first. So you have to go to court or that person would go to court win the court case that said Raymond is actually guilty for stealing the money. And then they have to try and collect from me through wage garnishment or whatever, and that not be successful, then they can go to the commission. So this real estate recovery fund is the last step in the chain. And when they go to court, there's all kinds of things they have to do. They have to exhaust all the legal remedies uh, to try and collect the money. They also have to prove that there was no collusion because th this was told to me, I don't know it to be a fact, actually tried to, they tried to do this several years ago where somebody accused an agent of stealing money and then went to the commission to get the money back and, the, and they split the money. It was a big sum of money. So they actually have to prove there's no collusion between the agent and that guy. They have to try and get all the money back through garnishments, all kinds of things before that can happen. <clears throat> you actually have to go to court and that court has to be within two years of when that action happened. All right, so there's a time frame too. And once you win in court, you then only have one year after the court judgment to go to the commission. So there are two time frames. From the action to the court is two years. And from when the court finds them guilty to making application to the, is one year. All right? Now, when they pay out, it's like a life insurance policy. First of all, they only pay out two times a year. They pay out June the 30th and December 31st. All right, so no matter when you make application and your application gets approved to get paid out, they're only going to write checks on June the 30th, yes. What is June the, that's a good question. What is June the 30th? It's the end of the sixth month. So it's the end of the first half of the year and the end of the second half of the year. Yeah. Technically, the answer is yes, but technically it's backwards. December 31st is the end of half a year. June is the end of the year because they work from July 1 to June 30th. They work a different year. They work a fiscal year. So they commit, and my board does the same thing. They work from July to June 30th. That always confuses people because they'll call me like July, like this year. When they called me in July of 2018 and they're like, oh, have I done my 28 CE? 2018 CE, I said, I hope so, because we're actually in year 2019 right now. We're actually, since July 1st, this is the 2019 licensing year. Even though you, the calendar year is still 2018, we're in the 2019 licensing year, because it started July 1 and ends June 30th. So when they pay out, they only pay out two times a year. And 
This is key. They only pay out 20000 per incident and a $50,000 cap on any one agent. Did you get three? All right, so $20,000 cap. So if someone is doing a big commercial deal and they steal 100 grand, all they're going to get is 20 back. The commission caps it 20,000 per incident and 50,000 per deal or per agent. So in other words, if they stole 20 grand from the first person, 20 from the second, and 20 from the third, the commission will pay 20 to the first one, 20 to the second one, and only 10 to the third one because they only pay 50 total. All right? And the commission has discretion on how they pay that out. Meaning they could do it like that, 20, 20, and 10. But what they probably would do is go, oh, all three of you guys made the claim in the same year or in the same time frame. So each one of you will get a third of the 50,000 and you'll get 16.7, 16.7, and 16.7 and split it that way. They have the right to do it however they want. But it also depends on when the court case comes in. If two of them may have got hit on the first half and the other one didn't come into the third half, the guy in the third half may get screwed because they paid the first two guys 20, 20 and then said, oh, we only got 50 left. Well, he stole 35,000. Ten's all you're going to get. So it's 20,000 per incident, $50,000 cap on this. Now, when that happens, guess what they do to that agent's license? She said, revoke it. No, they do not. Why would they not revoke their license? They want to keep the agent kind of on the hook so they will suspend their license until the money gets repaid. If they revoke it, that guy's got, well, I got no chance of ever getting my career back, so I'm not ever going to pay him. Screw him. So they just suspend their license until the money gets paid back. And it has to get paid back at 12% interest per year. But you want to hear the super big in the ding ding? Not only does the agent's license get suspended, so does the managing broker's license get suspended. Because he's liable for them. So if one of this happened to one of my agents and they beat town, I'll probably have to end up paying that back or my license would get suspended. And they probably would never find that person again because dead men tell no tales. <laughs> All right? If you got suspended, would you just make Jennifer your managing broker during that time? And then you can still do business? question is if I get suspended, that answer depends on what my company formation is. If it was a partnership, that let's go back to that. Let's make sure you understand. Partnership, if one of them, because remember, in a partnership, they all have to be brokers. If one of the partners gets their license suspended, so does the partnership license. But in an LLC, I can step out and somebody else can take over. All right? In a corporation, uh, it has to have all of the people get suspended before they lose their corporate license. So it kind of depends. Uh, there is a fund to investigate this. And that's what I said, there's a fee we, we pay, it's two or three bucks or something, to create this fund so that there's investigations. All right? Let's change audio.